said, uh, my name is Kenneth Wilkie. I'm here with Rackspace. And uh, I'm here with my colleague. I'm uh, here with my colleague, Adi Gangidi. Um, like I said, we both work at Rackspace. Our day to day is focused on the Open Power Barrel Eye server. And, uh, Open Power, and the Barrel Eye server uses OpenBMC for its uh, out of band management and things like that. And we're going to talk a, a little bit about that today and share with us, or share with you, the benefits we've seen of using uh, an open source BMC infrastructure. Just to get started, uh, I wanted to discuss. So just to clarify, I wanted to get everyone on the same page as far as what a BMC is. Uh, the acronym itself stands for Baseboard Management Controller. Uh, essentially, it's a small embedded chip that lives in your server that helps you keep tabs on the server. Uh, it's connected to a variety of sensors. It uh, lets you know how hot the, the server is, and the intake temperature, the fans, and gives you a lot of other information just to make sure that your server is in a, a healthy state. The, uh, Another feature that it has is it can show you the inventory within your server. It helps you know what like memory DIMMs you have in the server, what devices you have connected. And it also will keep track of a, a log of events that are occurring with your server. This could be like a, a stick of RAM goes bad, or maybe a, you have a fault with your RAID battery. And this can keep track of information like that to let the operations teams know whenever they need to get into the server and, and do some maintenance. And so I also wanted to share, there's several use cases for what you would, what you would do with the BMC. Uh, for us at Rackspace, there's three main, uh, main reasons why we use the BMC. When the gear first hits the data center, uh, we use the BMCs to configure some of the initial booting options and, and turn the servers on. Once the servers are turned on, we can use some of the features of the BMC like to attach re remote media, uh, to kick an operating system onto our servers, and, and get them into a production ready state. Uh, beyond that point, the main reason we would use the BMC uh, outside of just for infrastructure monitoring would be for troubleshooting the server. Uh, when a server has some kind of issue, we'll log into the BMC, we can get access to a remote console to the server. Uh, we can run a few diagnostics, we can update firmware, and we can do a couple things to get a little bit more insight into what's going on without having to have a DC operations technician go inspect the server uh, in person. And so most BMCs are based on a pretty common architecture. Uh, the overall design is uh, an industry standard, industry standard model uh, called IPMI, which is the Intelligent Platform Management Interface. Uh, it basically describes a few components in the way that they communicate with each other, uh, how the BMC can I'm going to try this one and see if this helps a little bit better. So right. keep it right up to your mouth. Okay. All right. Uh, so like I was saying, the BMC has a few standard ways that it's designed. Um, the way that it'll interface with the memory I.O. and the subsystems uh, of the server itself. And uh, so that we can hook up the BMC to our out-of-band management network, it usually has a, a dedicated interface, a dedicated network interface. Uh, but it can use the, the, the same interface that the, the main host system that it's within is attached to as well. Uh, I also wanted to mention that it's usually on a, like an embedded system on a chip. Very common, it's an ARM-based processor. Uh, we, we have on the slide here that it's often running Linux, but it's usually running some kind of, of real-time operating system. And the, the, the late, late trend is that it will progress towards using a, a Linux operating system, such as what BMC uses, or OpenBMC uses. And so typically, the, most of the BMCs that are out there today are like the, uh, the DRAC you'd find in a Dell server or ILO in an HP. Uh, on the power systems, you'd find their, their FSP uh, BMC. And typically, these are provided, these are built and provided for each product by the vendor who, who makes the product. The, um, usually, the security model of a BMC is, is not very strong. They're very heavily built around IPMI, and from a, just a purely protocol standard, IPMI is, is not very secure. Um, it, it has authentication, but it's very weak, and the, the, pro the protocol is just very dated and very vulnerable. Uh, most of the tooling to interact with the BMC is based on IPMI. Uh, 
there's not a lot of tools and libraries that interface with IPMI. Generally speaking, if, if you want to interface with it, you're going to probably be using IPMI tool. And the, the last thing I wanted to mention was that there's, there's no easy way to add your own software to, to most of the BMCs that are out there. Uh, typically, they're, they're not meant to be customized. And the, the licensing around customizations that you can make for some of them is very restrictive around how you can share that with, uh, with other people who might be interested in that. And so we've seen that this is a lot different with a, an open source BMC. And Adi is going to come up here and, and share with us some of the differences that we see with that. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, I'm Adi, and um, Kenneth talked about Kenneth talked about uh, how there's a lot of limitations with a conventional closed source BMC. I'm here to talk about how uh, Open BMC accounts for some of these limitations. In other words, I'm going to sell you on Open BMC for the next few minutes. Um, so to start with, um, something cool with Open BMC is that you can build your open own Open BMC binary. This is not possible with a uh, conventional BMC. Uh, with OpenBMC, this is possible because the OpenBMC source code, it's uh, readily available on GitHub. Also, um, the code's very well maintained. Um, there's, there's timely updates um, being done there. Um, and the build process is extremely easy. Um, all you have to do is run those three commands um, that you see on screen. And it would take about an hour or so to run it on our platform. Um, and there, we have an OpenBMC binary that we can flash in our system and test it. It's that easy. Another cool thing with OpenBMC is basically the fact that you can see the source code readily available to you, right? And this uh, comes up with advantages like uh, you can do security audits on the code that's already there. And you can also do... Uh, do some checks on the commits that are coming in. And if you feel like they, they're going to add some potential security vulnerabilities, um, what you can do is kind of be a part of the review process, suggest changes, and make sure they're resolved. Also, with OpenBMC, you flash the binary you build, right? So that, that's, that's uh, good in the, in, in because like, you don't have to worry about whether that binary was digitally signed or not, or what source was it built from, right? You have that clarity. OpenBMC has uh, modern tooling. Compared to IPMI, uh, as we kind of mentioned, as Kenneth mentioned before, um, it was developed in 1998 with 8-bit microcontrollers in mind, and uh, it lacks the complexity and scalability for the modern day data center, right? But I, uh, OpenBMC kind of like uh, accounts for this by making some modern design choices. To start with, um, OpenBMC has a, a REST API to ease automation tasks. So you can make targeted direct REST API calls to get the parameters you exactly need. You don't have to run a very generic tool like IPMI tool, get a bunch of text and parse it to get your parameters. You can just make directed calls. So that's a big advantage. Um, another thing with OpenBMC is that you can SSH into the BMC and look at the host console. Again, you don't need a specific tool to do that. You can build one if you want to, you know, if you're used to that kind of flow, but you can, all you need is basically an um, SSH. Also, um, another uh, good advantage of um, OpenBMC um, is that it runs the latest stable Linux kernel. I think they're going to move to a 4.4 kernel right now, so that's pretty new. Um, and what are some of the advantages of running a uh, latest Linux kernel, right? Um, so you have a lot of security fixes that come with, um, with the kernel, right, um, um, that people have contributed upstream. So you can use all of that. You get updated drivers, and you get ker new kernel functions that other people have contributed. You can make use of that. You don't have to write things from scratch again. Also, uh, the fact that you're running Linux kernel on an open BMC helps you uh, very easily run any average app that kind of runs on Linux. With uh, another huge advantage of 
OpenBMC is that you can customize it. So you can customize the OpenBMC source and before you just build it. So you can add services, remove services, or change them before you build it. And once you build it, um, once you make these changes, you can build it and, and test it immediately. So I, I mean, some, some examples of this are, say you don't like the authentication model in OpenVMC, or you think it could be done a little differently, um, you can go ahead and contribute that. Or you feel like the REST API structure could be changed a little bit, um, you, can, you can talk to the peers or the uh, uh, developers there, and, and you can contribute some source. Um, you you want to integrate your app with OpenVMC, but you feel like it'll be a more snug fit if um, you know some things in OpenVMC change. You can you can you know uh, push some comments for that. Um, let's step back for a minute and think about the significance of this with an example. Um, so, like let's take an example of uh, Ironic or OpenStack integration as an app with OpenVMC. So Ironic is our bare metal um, provisioning agent, and OpenStack, which is a superset, is our cloud provisioning system that we use. So uh, tr if you, if you kind of know about OpenStack developers, they tend to be really picky about things. They tend to want to have control on every little bit they work with. So with a conventional BMC, if they wanted to uh, integrate the agent or, or OpenStack with kind of say the conventional BMC, they don't have direct access to, access to source code. That's the primary limitation. So they'll have to change the way they do things in order to integrate, which they don't like very much. Um, also, um, with, um, with a, even if you did get access to an, a, so, a source code of, uh, from a BMC vendor, um, a conventional BMC vendor, um, you get very restrictive licenses so there is no way you can contribute it back, and and um, it, it's hard to do that. But with OpenVMC, uh, this integration is much. It becomes much easier. Firstly, you have REST API to make uh, targeted calls to, and you have the ability to make the changes in the source code um, up and push it upstream. That that they like very much. So. Uh, also, talking about building applications on top of OpenVMC. Um, there is an SDK available for OpenVMC that you can use to test your application um, in case you don't have the OpenVMC uh, a, a server running OpenVMC on your network. So you can use that SDK, build an OpenVMC VM, uh, and then test your application with it. Sorry. So with OpenBMC, you can contribute to the, to the source. Um, there's already an active community of developers and engineers working on it. Um, a good number of them are from IBM. Uh, some of them are from Facebook. Some of us are from Rackspace. And there's a lot of ODMs working on contributing. You can be a part of it, too. There's a lot of transparency in the OpenBMC community. Uh, all uh, the bug reports and bug fix activity is happening uh, publicly. And there's open conversations happening about long-term planning and feature goals, and what's the next big priority to pick and work on as a community. So um, also, there's a lot of community support on GitHub. Uh, there's IRC and mailing lists. So if you want to get started, you can hit up one of these three platforms to get started. And it's pretty, um, people are pretty helpful. Also, I want to summarize this talk um, by talking about how Rackspace's open BMC, BMC model in general has changed with OpenVMC. And if this is not very specific to Rackspace. It, this could be you. This could be your company, your organization. Um, so a traditional BMC, in the traditional BMC model, the biggest limitation was that we didn't have direct access to BMC source. Um, so if we think of a feature request or a bug um, that we wanted to file, um, what we would do is we would go and talk to the ODM to start with. Then the ODM would uh, probably talk to the BMC OS supplier uh, of theirs. And the BMC o OS suppliers would make the change in the source code. And then they would build a binary and then give it to us. Then we would test it and then put it into the data center. It's a long process. There's a lot of communication happening. There's a lot of steps of communication. Uh, as you know, uh, communication is kind of prone to errors. 
So we can avoid all that with the OpenVMC model that we're trying to follow right now. Um, so with OpenVMC, if we don't like something and if it's a small enough change, what we do is we make that change. Um, and our ODM is aware of this change because all the conversations about uh, you know, pushing new changes is happening publicly. So they're aware of that. So once this code gets merged, all they have to do uh, to get the new code is to just uh, uh, sync with the master branch on GitHub. Also with this new model, we get to take advantage of everyone who's contributing to o the OpenVMC source. At Rackspace, we're really excited about OpenVMC. I hope uh, you guys are too. Thank you.